today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz has an SUV for you, whether it's the stylish GLC, the compact GLA, three-row GLS, or the GLE GLC plug-in hybrids. Visit MBUSA.com for special offers. He's Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl MVP, and today hundreds of New York City street cart vendors are ditching their New York pretzels for King's Hawaiian soft pretzel bites. They, of course, are a big sponsor, King's Hawaiian. They're going to bring us Meat Friday coming up tomorrow. But uh, look who's in the heart of New York City. It's Eli Manning joining us on the program. How are you, Eli? I'm doing great, Dan. How are you? I got to get you. You got to come visit my cart. You know, you got to get some soft pretzel bites here. Well, we're going to have that tomorrow. Kings Hawaiian is coming to us, and then they're going to bring that. It looks like you're running a lemonade stand here. I, it is. That is the idea, except <laughs> it's Kings Hawaiian soft pretzel bites instead. And uh, I'm in the middle of New York City, and this is what I do. You know, New Yorkers <laughs> brought me so much joy and their support. I want to give back by giving out some. Uh, Soft pretzel bites. Look at you. You're just a man of the people. Okay. But do you ever run into a fan who's mad at you for something that you may have done during your career? Uh, You know, I think five years being retired, they've forgotten. It's amazing (laughs) how they forget about all the interceptions, the terrible games, the losses. They only remember the good stuff. And so... I, you know, the same thing happens to quarterbacks. You know, in five years, I'm like, I lost the game. I don't remember losing the game. I thought we won every one. <laughs> I was watching the Manning cast, and I was wondering with your brother and Bill Belichick there in the same room, who is more of a football nerd, Peyton or oh. Coach Belichick? Oh, man. I got to, I, I mean, I think I got to go with Belichick. Uh, just, I mean, he's just an encyclopedia of knowledge on, on football and everything. You could hear him in the TV timeouts, there's someone in his room that he's talking with. He's like, hey, wow, they're going like bare defense. This is not real sound. I don't like this move. Like he is, he is, you know, constantly just game planning, analyzing, looking at everything, seeing things that are unique or different or, oh, this is a really good. And so, I mean, he is just right in the middle of it. Peyton during the, during the TV timeouts, he's eating like a chicken parm sandwich or like, you know, he's buffalo wings. Just, you know, he's always got sauce on his face. He's a disaster. But he was offended when uh, Brandon Ayuk dropped that ball. Like it, it was as if he was still playing. It, it hurts him sometimes to watch bad football. It does. It does hurt him. And especially when a guy's been, you know, been out of training camp. You sit out, you sign this big, great big contract, and then you drop, you drop passes. Like what, you know? Hey, let's get the contract done. I think he's just mad at the whole situation. That that the idea of like missing training camp blows his mind to him. He 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 looked forward to training camp. He's like, finally, I get to go. Like, I think it should be a longer training camp. We should have longer football season. Um, and that's his mentality. So I think if he senses someone doesn't have that same mentality, he he just can't resonate. There was a sneaky line that, you know, Belichick talked about going to those Super Bowl parties after you lose a Super Bowl, and then you go, um, I never went to one of those. And it was it was an awesome line just to see Belichick's response to it. Uh, yeah, I was. Then I almost say like, "Hey, you know, Bill, were you invited to Peyton's loser, you know, Super Bowl party?" But I, I, I bit my tongue. <laughs> I'm like, I can't say that to Coach Belichick. Too much respect for him. He won too many other, you know, Super Bowls. And but uh, yeah, I mean, Peyton, I, I was surprised, like, you, you know, like about having everybody had to lose, lost the championship to get invited to this party. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm glad I wasn't invited. He's Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl MVP, joining us courtesy of King's Hawaiian, their new soft pretzel bites. And uh, he's in the heart of Manhattan's Flatiron District today. Um, Connor Murray talked about, hey, you know, the game plan didn't call for us to get the ball to Marvin Harrison. He said, you know, like pointed the finger at the offensive coordinator. He said it's not on the quarterback. Okay, and I criticized him because even if it's not on you, it is on you. You're the quarterback. You own it. it. It's your team. But how do you get the ball to somebody who everybody knows that you want to get the ball to? Well, I think there's always a couple staple plays where you can put them, you know, put your receiver in a certain spot, you know, and this is hey, no matter, basically no matter what the coverage is, no matter what the defense 
you know, we can get him the ball on the outside on a short end or on a hitch route, on a slant route. And it's not guaranteed it's going there. They could dictate the coverage to, to, to take you away. But, you know, I don't, I don't think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is getting double teamed on every play right now. I don't think, you know, as a rookie hadn't played a game, I don't think you're going to draw that attention. And, and sometimes it's just, it is it's truly just based on, you know, hey, we want to get them the ball. If they're playing man to man, you're going to go to your guy. But it just depends on on what the coverage is, or you have some special plays to get them on some play action. Those are the ones that are a little harder. Hey, we have a play action, a two man route. Maybe they they play a different coverage, or he gets covered up by the by a zone coverage. But there are a couple plays in this you know three step, five step passing game where you can get the ball to you know to certain guys. How often would receivers come back to you in the huddle and say? I'm open. <laughs> they, you know, we have pretty good receivers. If you, it's one of those deals. If you, you ask them, "Hey, were you open on the last play?" The answer is always yes. Like they don't, even, they don't even <laughs> think about what the play was. They don't even they say yes. That's just their mentality. But there are, there are, you know, times we're on the sideline. They'll come up and they'll be like, "Hey, th- this guy cannot hang with me." They're, they're pressed, and I'm running by him. Or they'll come and say, hey, this guy's getting antsy. We need to double move him. Like, normally they have pretty good suggestions. Um, and, you know, there, and there were times, there were maybe a few times on the sideline where I worked, you know, worked the other side of a man-to-man. I threw a, you know, a fade stop to a team mix, and I would ask, like, Victor, hey, Vic, did you get open on the fade on the other side? And sometimes he would say, like, no, not not really. Not really. He kind of covered me up on that one. But, you know, next time, I'll definitely not beat him. I'm prepared for the next one. So they, they don't want you to uh, think don't go to him by any means. Patience for rookie quarterbacks. Like, at what point do we get a sense of what kind of season it's going to be for these rookie quarterbacks? Unfortunately, I think it takes, like, a good – it kind of takes to the halfway point. I really do feel it takes that long to get a sense of – of your offense, of what's going on, the comfort level for the quarterback to maybe have an honest conversation with the offensive coordinator being like, hey, I really like this play. Or if there's a play that the coordinator really likes for the quarterback to be like, hey, I'm just not feeling it yet. Like at first you just kind of like what the coordinator likes and you don't know any better. And then as the season goes along, you start to you know kind of get your favorite plays, you get your favorite concepts. Uh, you're understanding the protections more and the rhythm of certain plays, and you start, you know, getting the nerve to say, "Hey, let's let's just run this play. Like this is my favorite play. Let's run it three times and just change up the formation a little bit so I can get completions, I can get into a rhythm." And I really do think it just takes it takes about you know a halfway point to to get that confidence and to get the feel and the speed of the game. I look at demeanor of quarterbacks, certainly young quarterbacks, because. Chances are they had a really successful college career. They're not used to, hey, I just threw a pick six. Not I got to go back out. Like you show me more after a pick six or an interception than you do after a touchdown. I want to see how you go back out there after doing something like that. Um, and I don't know how important that is for you if you're looking at somebody's head is down or they go out there and they're like, all right, come on, let's go. That was one play. Let's get it back. No, I think it's a good thing to look at and, and also just – you know, if they, if they make a, a bad play, they throw a bad interception, that next series, do they get gun shy? Are they, are they going to come out and still, a, you know, rip this, this skinny post on time? Or are they going to be like a little hesitant and go to the check down or a little hesitant and not, not you know, take their eyes down the field and say, just, you know, find my completions instead of, you know, hey, if something's open, I'm still going to rip this. And I still got confidence I can make these throws. And so, the head, you know, being being um, kind of cautious is is not a great thing uh, as an NFL quarterback. It usually leads to more mistakes because now you're maybe not throwing it to your first read, who is open, but it's a longer throw, and you're going to check down versus man, which is not great, and it can lead to more problems. So, that is something to look forward to and make sure uh, um, they don't get conservative, they don't get gun shy, and they still. Feel they can go and, and uh, you know ball get the ball out on time. Are you contractually obligated to say nice things about the New York Giants play this year? I'm I'm not obligated uh, to say nice things. I think uh, after week one, just you know, understanding I've been in this situation. I've had a bad week one before. 
Um, I've thrown three interceptions in, in week one. We've had losses. We've, we've started 0 and 2. And in a Super Bowl year, we started 0 and 2 and, and, uh, had to go down to Washington and down at halftime and had to come back win to get on a little win streak. I also know it can change quickly. You can, you can get your confidence back. You can get on a win streak. So that's what, uh, I'm always optimistic and, and, and I'm a fan of, of the Giants. I'm a fan of the coaches. I know them personally. I see how hard they work. I'm a fan of Daniel Jones and, and what, and just, I'm rooting for him to do well. And I'm going to be optimistic in that. Great to talk to you. Have fun down there, uh, in the Flatiron District. It's a uh, King's Hawaiian, these soft pretzel bites, the, uh, first ever snack by King's Hawaiian. Great people that, uh, have become one of our favorite sponsors. Good to talk to you, Eli. Thanks for joining us. All right, Dan. Thanks so much. A lot of fun. All right. Uh, you know, he's got his uh, cooking apron on down there. Beautiful day in New York City. Flatiron District. Heart of New York City. Cooking up some uh, grub there for whoever comes by.